still join because I just have to do some announcements and such um, before we get into it. Okay, so here's your thread. You may have heard of her. Um, the first thing is that, oh wait, that's for first period only, Never mind. We're gonna talk about the gradient tools today. You're gonna hear me say the gras sound a lot, the gray, the gras, the whatever. Um, so just get used to it, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, gradients are the quickest way that you can add value, which is that um, the artistic version, the artistic definition of value instead of the like monetary or the quality version of value. It's the uh, distance from light to dark. And then there's a couple different variations on the gradient tool that you can use um, in Illustrator. So you're welcome to follow along with me if you'd like, but I am going to be doing mostly informational uh, for now, just so you can see how this tool works. I'm going to pull up a couple shapes here so that I can demonstrate each different type of gradients. And then we can get into what we got going on today. All right. So we have three completed paths here. This is important to note for the, uh, for the gradient tool. Remember, your pen creates paths, but they don't become shapes until they are polygons, until they start and stop. They have a close. They could fill up with a liquid um, if they had to and not spill because they have a fully closed sort of situation. The gradient tool lives right here. It is above the eyedropper tool. I have the hiccups, excuse me. And you can see it's above the, uh, it's got this cool little animation that takes a pretty simple circle and makes it into a far more interesting planet by adjusting the gradual change between at least two colors. That is the gradient portion. So in order to have a gradient, you need to have a polygon, and then you can click on your gradient tool and either click once on a, on a completed path, or you can click, oh, that took it away completely. Um, you can click and drag with the gradient tool. Um, once you've made a gradient, of course, apparently it won't let me do that now. And you can see that this is the uh, default stock gradient. It is a relationship from white to black with a midpoint in between that's going to create gray. Gradients are going to transition. This is by default the first one that's called a linear gradient because it moves in a line. They're going to transition from however many colors you have along this uh, kind of timeline, so to speak, or number line, I suppose. And then they have a midpoint that adjusts how much of the color balance you want uh, in one side or the other. So if you want a lot more darkness, you want a lot more shadow, you want a lot more contrast, you can pull that middle slider away from the, uh, or towards the lighter color to make it more dark, and vice versa. We can pull the uh, lighter color towards the dark color to take up more light uh, in the space here. What the gradient tool might do when you first click on it is open up this panel right here uh, on Essentials Classic. It's in the second group, the middle one, similar to the tool. This gives you a little bit more adjustment into the different types and different colors that you can uh, make with the gradient here. You can pick any two colors. And since we in unit, uh, I think it was five, I can't remember. No, that was typography. Unit four, we talked about color harmonies. You want to stick to those color harmonies. Like I'm going to do, um, let's do purple and kind of yellow. Let's do like a violet. And so you can change the fill color the same way you would change it on any other shape by double clicking on this circle. That's going to pop open the smaller menu with the more uh, slider adjustments, or you can double click on the fill box with it selected like this. And I can set this to like a purple, and then it's going to go from purple to black, mixed with some gray in the middle. And then let's put a gold over on this side, kind of a yellow, like harvesty, like wheat gold, husky gold. And it's going to create, just after a couple clicks, a really interesting uh, color fill that you can adjust here as well, the same way that you can move the midpoints, you can move the starting points around. Um, again, like the pen tool, it's fun to just kind of experiment and see how the, uh, the things work. But it's the quickest way to get these interesting compositions of color that are really uh, aesthetically pleasing. They look really nice by default. Um, if you ever need to edit your gradient, you can click on the shape that has a gradient fill. You can see right here the fill color is the same gradient as uh, the example. Click on that with the gradient tool and you can adjust this gradient by like maybe rotating it, grab it on the corners. You can increase the length. You can change the uh, where the colors are at by clicking and dragging on. These are called stops on the gradient. Um, and if you wanna add more stops, there's two ways you can do that. It's always gonna be this triangular cursor with the plus sign. So you can either click on the line and add different colors that way, which you can then change the fill color of just like this, make this a little bit richer purple. It's going to create that band across. Let's make this a little bit richer 
orange, perhaps. I know purple and orange are technically not, so it's blue and orange. But now we have all of these different points that we can work with, and we can adjust all of the midpoints between them to create something like a, uh, maybe like a sunset type color pattern aesthetic. You know, it's a very easily adjustable tool that makes something cool looking uh, pretty much right off the bat, which is cool. And this is your linear gradients. You can edit that by clicking the gradient tool or by um, if you want to really get into the the amount of magenta in a color or the amount of black in a color, you can click uh, just one time or two times, I mean, two times on any of these stops. And it's going to pull out this expanded menu that allows you to adjust. I'm in CMYK. If it was RGB, it would have those three instead. Um, you can sample. There's all types of cool stuff that you can uh, adjust on your gradients. They are very, very adjustable, very, very customizable. The other type of gradient is a radial gradient. It's going to maintain the same uh, color that you set initially, unless you just click on a new shape with the gradient tool. It's going to go back to the linear, white to black by default. And there's three different types here. This next one is radial. Same way that linear creates a line, radial is going to create a radius. So if I click on this again with my gradient tool, you can see I now have a radius to work with. It's exactly the same way. But if I were to extend this, maybe adjust some of these points a little bit, maybe rotate this down a bit. Who's to say if it would rotate, that would be awesome. And you can really quickly create the illusion of 3D, right? It's kind of like old computer graphics where you have the, uh, this is value in action where it goes from light to dark. You can imagine your light sources right here, casting the lights and then building a shadow around the bottom. That creates this really cool uh, fake 3D effect because it gives it depth, it gives it value, it gives it uh, structure by using the gradient just set to black and to white. This is a radial one. You can also eyedrop gradients. If this has a gradient fill and I took my eyedropper, it's gonna take the exact same properties just like typography would. Um, but you can also adjust it this way by changing, let's say this was, let's say the light had a kind of yellowish tint to it. And let's say the ball has kind of a, I don't know exactly. Complement it or analogous with yellow is going to be in the green category, right? By using gradients, it has this cool sort of fake 3D, uh, very interesting sort of Y2K early computer style um, that you can take advantage of if that's a design style that you're interested in. And then finally, the third type of gradient that I'll show you is the freeform gradient. The freeform gradient just puts a bunch of points inside of a shape's fill that you can change them individually. And it'll basically just make a mixed up mess of color, not mess in a bad way, but a mixed up uh, situation of color here as if you were like mixing paints. So I have five stops to work with here. I have a couple different options. Um, I don't want to do five colors. So I'm just going to drag this stop out of the way. Let's do three. Let's do an analogous, an analogous red. So I want to have a light red, kind of an orange, and then kind of a darker red. So let's go light red like this. I'm just clicking and holding on the little bar of rainbow of hues on the bottom here. Let's do the light red here. Let's do maybe more of a maroon here. That's pretty brown, but that's okay. We can adjust some of the maroonness of it. I don't really exactly have an exact recipe. I'm just kind of adjusting the sliders very small amounts so that I can get a result that I want. That's definitely brown. Um, it's okay. We'll do brown. Brown is in the red and orange. Uh, flavor of colors. And then let's do something a little bit more adjustable here. That's definitely maroon. All right, so now I have this interesting relationship of colors that's going to gradually change between all of the stops that I have available. OK, I didn't know I could do that. That's a fun discovery. Um, if I click on Edit Gradient, it's going to allow me access to edit those points once again. If I click on this one, or I have to deselect it, click on this one. Edit gradient, that's going to pop up the gradient sort of graph relationship. Same thing here. You can see how it's working. This is a very cool tool that creates these visually interesting pieces, and that we'll definitely use more in this category for your Project 6.3 to give things depth and shape and more visual interest. And that's all I wanted to show you today. Sorry, I talked for a little bit longer than I uh, anticipated. Those are your three main types of gradients. I'll put some gradient resources and links uh, in the I almost said the description. I meant the thread um, so that you have more stuff that you can check out. Bless you.
What I want you to do today, if your computer has internet or you have your laptop on you, is keep working on 6.1 and 3. Try to finish those up today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk about ways that you can add texture and more uh, sort of visual fuzz. Give something uh, that less digital cleanliness, which is kind of weird to think about. But when we make traditional art, it has uh, imperfections. We want those same imperfections in digital, just because we as humans like the way that it looks, generally speaking. Anyway, mess around with the gradient tool a little bit. Um, we're going to really get into 6.3 after the break, so don't stress about it. Um, and these are really cool tools that you can start applying. You can start thinking about, you can start using. Thanks, y'all.